What's cracking? Uh, welcome back to part three. As you can see, if you watch part two, I'm in the same section, area, uniform. Everything's the same. I'm just making these little vids shorter. Um, so I don't have to bore you with like 40 minutes of like, hey, look at this day for day. Yay. Um, so let's fucking jump into it. <laughs> Alrighty, first up, we'll fucking do, what did I, let's, I've just got a, it's just a bundle of films here, let's just, alright, so let's do this, uh, first up, I've watched these shorts many a times on the YouTube, and I saw it on DVD, all of them together, and I was like, fuck yeah, Rowan Atkinson live, some of the fucking funniest shit I've ever seen, my god. The Devil, The Indian Restaurant, Fatal Beatings. Is that the drum kit? Was it? Uh, a Warm Welcome, Fatal Beatings, and now Nazareth the, the Amazing, Invisible Man, The Good Loser, Elementary Dating. It's fantastic. Guys After the Game, it started with a sneeze, with friends like these, pink tights and plenty of pops. Some of these I don't think I've even seen, but I fucking will now. A master, master. <laughs> Excuse me. Whew. Next up, we have this. I've been somewhat intrigued about this for a while. Um, Hollywood Land. It's about the murder of Superman back in when Hollywood had land in it. Um, don't really know much about it, to be honest. I only I know that that's the main idea of focus. But I've always been intrigued to watch it. So, Hollywood Land. Bam! Next up, I was happy to find this because I've been wanting it for ages and I never bought the Blu ray because I was lazy and shit. And I was like, ah, fuck it. Trespass! Walter Hill with fucking featuring songs from Ice T, Ice Cube, Public Enemy, Sir Mix of Lot, Gang Star, Black Sheep, and more. Damn. Executive producers Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale. There you go. Ugh. Just fucking look at the cast. It's just like Bill Paxton and William Sadler. I've been wanting to see this film for a while now. and I'm fucking going to jump straight into it when I can. 100%. I'm going to leave these two for later. <laughs> um, Next up is a film that I fucking love to bits. It's a masterpiece. <sighs> Stickers and shit. Um... He should have won an Oscar for this. This should have been his first Oscar. That is Bedazzled, Brendan Fraser. I don't care what anyone says, this is... I love it. It's fantastic. It's better than the original. I wouldn't say that much. As much as I love Dudley Moore and... Peter Cook. Elizabeth Hurley can be my fucking devil. So many wet dreams when I was young of her. Fuck me. <laughs> Elizabeth Hurley is a devil. You'd be like, yeah... I'd do anything, take my soul. Just, just, just take me. Next up, war, yeah, not Western. Western film. Uh, from the early 2000s, mid 2000s. The Alamo. I haven't seen the John Wayne one. Can't be asked. Dennis Quaig, Billy Bob Thornton, Jason Patrick, and Patrick Wilson. Oh, yeah. The Alamo. I'm interested. I want to see it. Fuck yeah. Why not? Tell me if it's good. Uh, here we go. I have the phone here. One of that. I've seen these both. A little double feature here. And I was like, I don't think I actually have these films. So, if I can wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Cape Fear... The OG and the remake, Scorsese, Scorsese's remake. Um, see, Scorsese has done like three remakes now. Crazy. <laughs> kind of a remake. Um, yeah, both great films. Both equally as good as each other. Can't like fault either of them. 
Um, but yeah, wonderful films. De Niro is a scary looking motherfucker in that one. That's for sure. This one is a classic western. My God, very classic. Terence Hill classic. Uh, th I feel like this has a fucking proper release somewhere, but I saw it and I was like, I could not be asked. I couldn't be asked like searching for it on the internet, so I just spent my money. They call me Trinity. From that little, I don't know what. I d I don't know much. Of, I don't think this is even a label or anything. It's just someone releasing s films. Because I had this is the same setup as when I had someone knocking on my door, which is a Charles Bronson and Anthony Perkins film, and out of the blue, before they got their fucking Blu-ray release, so someone was doing these DVDs and shit, and I was like, fuck yes, pray to that man. But yeah, I don't think I've seen this, it doesn't ring any bells, I can't remember having it, I feel like Blue Underground must have done it at some point, I guess, it seems like a Blue Underground kind of thing. Kind of film anyway. But yes. Bud Spencer. Wait a minute. Yeah, Bud Spencer and Terence Hill. Next up. Reign of Assassins. With its glossy, slippy cover. And I was like, oh yeah, sick. Michelle Yo. Nice little Madman release. <laughs> Damn. Next up, Oliver Stone film that I've been wanting to see for a while. Very long time. Heaven and Earth. With uh, good old Tommy Lee Jones in his uh, army role. <laughs> Heaven and Earth. Been wanting to see this for a while. Another Vietnam, near the Vietnam War film from Oliver Stone too. Which will be fun. Oh. What's next? I'll do this pile. Oh, there's the other one. Um, this one, I I used to have it. I don't... I didn't. I got rid of it or something. But um, now I have it again. Big red one. Sam Fuller's classic war film. Fantastic film. Great film. Worth every minute. Get on it. Uh, same with this. I think I used to have it, but got rid of it. But I still think it's a fucking brilliant action film. On Buck. Fucking, like, the second... Second one, third one are okay. But this one just, it just, you know, tops it all, started it all. It's fucking brilliant action, brilliant fighting, brilliant choreography. Good rewatch value, I believe. Fantastic. Uh... There you go. This one, uh, I saw a trailer for this not too long ago, and then I completely forgot about it. And then I saw this on the shelf, and I was like, oh, "This looks familiar." Um, sort of an independent little crime caper film, South of Heaven, with uh, Jason Sudeikis there in the lead role. And you know, he's like a you know, it's kind of independent film. I mean, Jason Sudeikis is, um, he's a well-known kind of thing. He can be top billing at some form of, like, stupid Hollywood fucking comedy. But, like, you can see he had a passion for this little film there. He liked the idea of it, let's just say. Uh, what's next? This one. Uh, this was completely brand new. It was still in its shrink wrap. Heard mixed films heard mixed things about it but either or you kind of always hear mixed things about this director's work so I was like fuck it for was it two dollars or something thought I'd give it a go that's old by M. Night Shyamalama Ding Dong um <clears throat> but yeah He's very on about his twists and what have you. But yeah, brand new, still in the shrink. Old. Next up, this was this is a brand new film too, but it sort of went under the radar. 
I think it was filmed in Australia as well. I believe. Um, or part of it was filmed in Australia, I guess. During COVID, because I remember seeing an article or whatever. That's Matt Damon's still water, where he's looking for his missing uh, daughter or some shit. Yeah. Oh, something. Doing some detective work. Brand new. Fuck it. With brand new shit. This one I used to have. But then... I was watching a guy's videos on YouTube called Space Ice. And you might know him. He's, done fa he's fantastic. Um, that's just uh, made me... Started to make me think about... Um, Van Damme. And I uh, saw this. Death Warrant. And I was like, fuck. I used to have a lot of Van Damme stuff. A lot of Action Man stuff. I don't anymore, but like, I can't just like, do you want to watch them again? So it's good. You always like find these at op shops and shit. So I'm like, if I get rid of it, it will pop up somewhere again. But yeah, Death Warrant. It's been a while since I've seen this. But I need some very frequent violence in my life. Do, 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 do. Next up, I thought I had this. I know I've been looking for this film for a long time. I downloaded it many years ago. Watched it, fucking loved it. Great film. Glen Gary, Glen Ross. Little UK release. UK, fucking brilliant film. If you know, you know. Um, two disc little finger. I was like, fuck yes. Set for that. Next up, I was kind of iffy in getting these two. They're a dollar each. Or two dollars each. I was sort of if you're getting this too, because I've been thinking about getting the box set. But um I guess, you know, there's no harm in getting like the first two seasons of a TV show <laughs> for fucking four dollars. You know, you can't really complain. You just have the only annoying thing is you just have to wait for the other fucking seven seasons. I need another five seasons to come through. Um, but, uh, only Fools and Horses, some great classic, uh, British comedy TV, season one and two, wham, bam, thank you, man. So, I know, season one and two, you know, there's seven seasons in the lot, so, we'll get there. Ugh, I'm gonna do that last, next up, ugh, alright, we're getting there, we're getting there. Alright, next up, this was brand new, still on the shrink. It's a great film, beautiful film. Paris, Texas. It's beautiful. If you know, you know. Harry Dean. You just need Harry Dean. If some if a film has Harry Dean in the title, you just fucking get it. There's no question about it, you just get it. Alright? That's my motto. This one, I feel like I've seen this. I think I have, and one of those like 50 or 20 movie packs because this is like that old ass I don't know if it's even a Roger Corman fucking produced film but um it's the wild ride I do believe I've seen this um but I just thought I'd grab it again to get some old school fucking Jack Nicholson Magna Pacific you know you can't go wrong with Magna Pacific they fucking did some they did God's work back in the day. God's work. Next up is a Clint Eastwood film. Another Clint Eastwood film like Blood Work that I haven't seen. And a lot of his 90s stuff. It's always his 90s stuff that I haven't sort of seen. It's kind of like Scorsese. Everyone talks about like Casino and fucking Goodfellas. But he's, there were so many other films in the 90s that no one talks about. So, But this is one of them. Uh, Absolute Power with Gene Hackman and Ed Harris, Laura Lindley, Judy Davis, Scott Glenn, E.G. Marshall. Look, it's got a fucking cast and a half. I'm sure Clint will be a very good man. But I'm sure Clint would have made a very good film in this. Yes, produced and directed by Clint. Another Clint film. For a few dollars more. Bam. Sergio Leone. For a few dollars more, 
And I got a fistful of dollars. There you go. I just need good and bad and the ugly. That's all I need in my life. Oh, oops. Bam. Two disc thing as well. And what is it? Ugh. I love those old school booklets. It's like the collection, which got Triple X there. The next level as well, the Ice Cube. Win this Sony Mini DV handy cam. I fucking love that shit. I love these little fucking Seinfeld on DVD. And then you got the TVs and. Oh. Gold mines, my Gold mines. Ah. Uh, here we go. Stuff. So I got these at a. Oh, uh, not this one. This one I just grabbed because there was nothing else around. I was like, yeah, I kind of want it, but not. But I do it at the same time. Heaven Knows Miss Allison. Classic DVD. Uh, classic film. The 1957. Directed by John Huston. No, it's got Robert Mitchum in it. Love my Robert Rich Mitchum. Deborah Kerr there. It's a war film, so I'm like, fuck yeah. That's all I need. Um, but anyway, these next films were at a Selvers that are kind of like pricey because they're in like a sort of rich area that they're, um, they're just, they're a bit up themselves kind of thing. So I was like, oh, we're charging like $3, $4 for this DVD. I'm like, really, Gunt? Really? Every other Selva around you charges $2. Why are you up in the price? Um... And, some, and it's annoying because I have good shit there too. But this was in the dollar section. I used to have it. But I grabbed it anyway because it was dollar. Again. The Entity. A little supernatural fucking um, horror flick. Directed by Sydney Fury. Sydney J Fury. He's got a fucking imprint box set coming soon as well. Um, I did find The Rage. When my first video for... Um, <laughs> June had the rage in it. There you go. Yeah, surprised. Um, next up, <coughs> I grabbed this. This was in like the kids section. I was like, laugh. Critters collection one to four. I've seen the first one. Apparently, I've seen the second one. The, my letterbox says I've seen it. Can't remember it. Um, but I do want to see Leo in his first film because I've never seen it, and I do want to see Critters in Space. Oh, yeah, little fucking four critter films there. Uh, next up is a film based off a book, stage playbook that I want to read. Um, the Crucible. Arthur Miller's Timeless Tale of Truth on Trial. Now the thing about it was about the witch trials and shit, and I'm just like, oh, that's very interesting. Haven't read the. The fucking book yet. Or the play, I should say. I haven't read the play yet. But, um... be interesting to see how they transfer the scenery and all that film to play. So, Daniel Day-Lewis and Renata Ryder. Fantastic. Next up, fucking... Th th three... Right. I'm like rubbing on it. Oh, so itchy. <laughs> What do I show first? Fuck it. Alright. So, I was so happy to find this. Straight up. I can't couldn't fuck off that security fucking device thing. That ripped more than it needed to. Oh well. Deal with it later. Um, it's fantastic old school Scorsese film. And I mean fucking old school buddy. Um... Alice doesn't live here anymore. Um, what is this? 1974. 74. This is after... Is it after the Roger Corman one? What's the fucking Roger Corman one? I can't remember now. Ah. Shit. It's going out of my mind. Anyway, Alice doesn't live anymore. I love it. I just want to find more underappreciated Scorsese films. 
Next up is a Tartan video. I was like, fucking Tartan video. I'll grab that. I don't give a shit what it is. Um, Sex and Luca. Or Lucia. There you go. Mysterious, mysterious, surprising, and ravishingly beautiful. Great sex, too. They yeah, are sick. Let's do it. It's going to be a... F what is it? Is it French? Or, no, this is uh, Spanish. Spanish, I think. Fucking country you're from. Where are you from? Yeah, I feel this is Spanish. Yeah, you go, Spanish. So, they'll be very sexy. Lots of nudity. Well, I'm not sick. But Tartan video. They're fucking... I love finding that sort of shit. I think I found one other Tartan video. In a op shop. But, um... Yeah, I just fucking love... Because, you know, if you're a collector, you know that, like, that shit's not expensive. To, like, import it and all that. Get it off eBay or something, whatever. People, like, pay and then just... It's crazy. This one I've been wanting to find for a long time. I've been wanting to watch, actually. I should say, I've been wanting to watch for a long time. Finding it for, uh, it's a US release as well, too. So it's really weird just... Finding, like... US or UK releases in Australia. It's like, you, it kind of gives you gives you the idea that there are other collectors out there that don't really know their collectors or don't really know the market. They're just like, buy something and piss it off. But, um, Breaking Away. Uh, old school, 70s, 70s film. Daniel Stern, Dennis Quaid, and Jackie Earl Haley. We wanted to see this film for a long time. I don't know why. Everyone talks it up. It's meant to be good. So I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm interested. It's from the 70s, I believe. 1979. It's anything from the 70s kind of works. Okay. Last three. Last three. This is from a little Vinny's. Some... Little Vinny's. What do I show? F I'll show this first, I guess. So this is sequels that are to a film that I never thought had sequels. Um, yeah, I just didn't. Uh, it's from Siren Visual Entertainment. This one's like 86 minutes. But this one has two films in it. but And it's only 100 minutes. So I'm like... <laughs> these are like 45 minutes each or some shit. I don't know, but if you ever knew that these had a sequel, tell me. I told my mate and he said, oh, they're shit from memory. I'm like, eh, fair. Lockstock. Lockstock and four stolen hooves. Lockstock and one big bollock. And there's Lockstock and a good slopping out. Mate, they're just fucking, I don't know. Where's it up? I'll read you Lockstock and Four Stolen Hooves. The Lock is a pub in the East End of London. Jamie, Lee, Bacon and Moon are the proprietors of this fine establishment. These boys have the bottle but not the brains. Unbeknownst to them, for the next few days they will acquire stolen pornography, a horse and an erotic timepiece which will belong to a big mob boss. And the boys are going to need a lot more than dumb luck to save them from... A good nutting. It's kind of funny. I feel like just reading that and reading the other one as well. I feel like they kind of just base themselves, base these films off the idea that in like Lock, Sock, Two Smoking Barrels that the mob boss owned a sex shop and was talking about sex toys and shit. And they're just like, that's a good idea. Let's put sex in our films. Next up, was it? Lockstock and one big bollock. The boys enter the meat trade when Miami Vice employs them to pick up a consignment of sirloin. They soon have plenty. They soon have plenty to beef about as three psychotic Russians, a drug crazed duo, Moon's country cousins, all have designs on the boys' meat. Needless to say, all goes. Needless to say, all goes pear-shaped when back in London, 
Peristokia is abandoned and the bull red and the bull sees red. What the fuck? I don't even know. But I just fucking read. Fuck my nose is itchy. I'm gonna rip out all my fucking nose hairs. Uh the lock stock and a good slopping out. The four boys seek to take a holiday, but on the way Miami intervenes. He wants a key oh is it what? Miami intervenes. He wants a key to a safe, but unfortunately it's hidden somewhere up another convict's rear anatomy. Trials and tribulations ensue as they eventually land up sleeping with the enema. Oh, what the fuck I just read. I have no idea. But there you go. It spawned three films, three... Uh, Mental. Next up, last one. I was, I've seen a, a couple, of, this is a criterion. I've seen, a, I found a few in op shops before and I just grab them. I'm like, fuck yeah. Even if I like, I don't know, don't know it. Well, kind of iffy, it's whatever. The Royal Tenenbaums, the first Wes Anderson, Wes Anderson film I saw. I don't mind his stuff. Some of some of his stuff is like is either really good or just average, which is kind of strange because it's all it's almost the same. It's all like sometimes the same color palette and it's all like symmetrical and shit. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. It's got his thing, but like some films, like the Grand Budapest Hotel was great, but I couldn't give a shit about Moonrise Kingdom. I mean, like that was okay. Like some stories just seem better than others. Or some worlds just seem better than others, but um, no, I got them. But yeah, a fucking Criterion. Uh, this was at the Vinnies where I got the lock stocks. Um, two discs with the booklet inside there as well. Um, so I'm like a booklet. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just fucking. Kind of chuffed to find that. I was like, yeah, it's not a bad film. Uh, this first one I saw, I remember enjoying it, enjoying parts of it, and some parts I still remember. And I was like, fuck, I remember that. Um, I will watch it again at some point, but um, yeah, just fucking finding a criterion at a op shop is crazy. Crazy, crazy. But yeah. Oh, fuck. I'm going to go eat food. I'm starving. It's fucking African. Yeah, take it easy, have fun, enjoy.